Good evening. You know, I think it was G.K. Chesterton who once said... The follies? The follies of my youth. Men's youth? Of men's youth. <laughs> Are in glorious retrospect. Are in retrospect glorious. <laughs> And so, our uh, story tonight? No, cons are in retrospect glorious. Our story in retrospect? No, are in retrospect glorious. <laughs> are in retrospect glorious. Compared? Compared? <laughs> by Eddie Waring. <laughs> Compared to? Compared? The follies of men's youth are, in retrospect, glorious compared to... <laughs> compared to the follies of their old age. Compared to the follies of their old age. <coughs> I sherry tonight. No, no. I think it was G.K. Chesterton who once said, the follies of our youth are, in retrospect, glorious compared to the follies of our old age. And so our story tonight concerns a boy confronted at one and the same time with the follies of youth and old age. That's it. Okay, fine, fine, fine. 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 That felt good, that felt good. Well, um, it's really good. Thank you. My school, my school, Greybridge for two weeks, and the dour, forbidding place had produced such misery in my soul and fear in my mind as I had never known in my whole life. Everything about the place seemed designed to crush the soul and break down any reserve of pride I ever had. <laughs> Thank you, Foster. Yes, please. Beating the headmaster was just one of those ghastly chores which produced such depression within me. Ooh, that's better. <laughs> there was also the compulsory fight with the grizzly bear, which all new boys had to go through. And there was St. Tadger's Day, when, by an old tradition, boys who had been at the school for less than two years were allowed to be nailed to the walls by senior people. <laughs> the days always began the same way. We were woken by Alsatians at 3.30, and after two games of football, we assembled for morning prayers in Big Hall. O oh Lord, we give thee humble and hearty thanks for this thy gift of discipline, knowing that it is only through the constraints of others that we come to know ourselves, and only through true misery can we find true contentment. <laughs> we ask thee especially today, O oh Lord, to remember the owner, trainer, and rider of Doncaster Boy in the 415 at Chepsley. <laughs> and may the fire of thy just and awful wrath fall upon Biggs, Normanton, Potter Minor, and Tookie. Amen, amen. <laughs> it has come to my knowledge that certain boys have been helping masters to escape. <laughs> Small parts of a glider have been found in the History 6 form library, and this must not repeat. How I long to be able to hop like the second year boys, <laughs> and not to have to ask permission to breathe out after 10.30. <laughs> and how I dreaded, as we all did, the sight of Grayson, the school bully. He had twice won the public school's bullying cup, and last year beat the extraordinarily vicious Ackroyd of Charterhouse at a kick-in of fags at the Hurlingham Club. <laughs> Say, sorry, Grayson. You call me school bully. You miserable little tick. <laughs> if 
five weeks after the start of term, I had an amazing stroke of luck. <gasps> I was accidentally shot in the stomach by Monsieur Lapointe during French translation. <laughs> and I ended up in the school sanatorium. Now at last, my parents would come to visit me, and I could tell them of the horrors I was going through. I felt sure they would understand. Hello, Mummy. <laughs> Hello, Tomkinson. How are the wounds? Oh, not bad, not bad. <laughs> Here, I brought you these. Oh. <laughs> what are they? Shoe trees, dear. Oh, super. <laughs> Where's Daddy? He's at the South Pole again, dear. Oh, lucky Daddy. I wish I could be there. Tomkinson. Yes, he Mummy? May, uh, he may not be back from the pole. You mean? Yes. He has a woman down there. <laughs> Another woman, Mummy, besides you? I'm afraid so. He keeps going back there, you know. This is his 146th expedition. Yes. I never realised. I, I thought he was... Mapping the annual movement of the polar ice shelf. Yes, so did we all. Mummy, perhaps I should come home. And... No. No, I'm afraid you must stay here, Tomkinson. A nice gentleman has agreed to pay your school fees for four years. And Henry Aston says you can stay on here free during the holidays. Oh, but Mummy! I'm afraid it's the only thing we can do, Tomkinson. I shall continue to send you cakes, of course. Oh, Mummy, please. I'm afraid I must go now, dear. I do hope the wounds heal up. Oh, they're nothing, honestly, Mummy, please. Let me just come back. You've come here, Oswald. Yes, Mr. Rogers. <laughs> Bye-bye, Mummy. I was shattered. I couldn't believe that my father would just go off like that with another woman. He was a homosexual for a start. <laughs> from that moment on, I resolved to do everything in my power to escape from Greybridge at the first opportunity. I was confined to indoor activities only. What is that, Tomkinson? <laughs> <laughs> it's a model icebreaker, sir. <laughs> it's a bit big for a model, isn't it? It's a full-scale model, sir. <laughs> it's not a model if it's full-scale, Tomkinson. It's an icebreaker. Yes, sir. It's good, isn't it, sir? It's got three engines, an enormous... No, no, no. That, that's not the point. <laughs> that is not a model. <laughs> the hell of us think if this comes up at Speech Day Exhibition. You're, you're a very stupid boy building icebreakers like this, Tomkinson. <laughs> yes, sir. Now, I won't say anything to the headmaster if you can get it down to a minimum of four foot. Well, sir, there's, there's 1,500 tonnes of steel in this one. Do you want to come and see the headmaster with me? No, sir. Well, melt it down at once. Yes, sir. <laughs> Sorry, sir. <laughs> there seemed no way I could escape from this prison. Daily, my depression and misery mounted. Until one day, amongst the usual games announcements on the school notice board, something caught my eye. <laughs> June the 12th, in big school, Rear Admiral Sir Vincent Smythe Obelson, the polar explorer, will address the school. I wondered, 
Could this be my chance? For our school lecture this term, we are very fortunate to have secured the services of one of our most famous and distinguished old boys. The polar explorer, Rear Admiral Sir Vincent Smythe Obelson. Applause, applause! How nice it is to be it's here. It's me! Ah, who said that? I would like Shut to up. say... <laughs> who was it? <laughs> right. The entire back three rows will come and beat me this evening. <laughs> Carry on. Well, I've just returned from exploring one of the enormously interesting polar ice caps. <laughs> I explored for over three months, eight hours a day. I got up at nine, I'd explored until six, with a one-hour, non-exploring break for lunch. <laughs> and during that time, I can safely say, I have explored in His Majesty's name an area the size of Yorkshire. <laughs> this area... Stop it! <laughs> if the school refuses to show its appreciation spontaneously, I shall be forced to close it down instantly and burn selected boys. <laughs> Please! <laughs> Is that clear? <laughs> what? Go on. This area of polar ice caps I have called Gravage Land. This was the moment I'd been waiting for. You know, boys, there's nothing worse than seeing a human body abused. Rubbish! <laughs> Who said that? <laughs> Mr. Ryan, sir. Oh, I see. Sorry. Thought it was one of the boys. <laughs> Carry on. <laughs> and the future of our children and our children. Well, the headmaster, I'm very kindly agreed in honour of my visit to give the whole school 20 minutes off. Let's all stand and sing the school song. My school, my school. The lecture finished, and soon I felt myself being lifted up. It had worked. At last I was on my way out of Greybridge. Hardly daring to breathe, I looked out on a new world outside. Yes, that was uh, very good, Ellis. Very uh -huh. good indeed. Thank you, Headmaster. Should save us a bit of money there. But why? Why the school song? Oh, I thought it was a jolly good wee spending it, sir. It just sort of came to me. You'll well, stick to the script in future, Ellis. Yeah. Oh, no. After the incident with the trunk, things became really hard for me. My ears were sewn back, and I had to do three weeks' detention in a sack on the school maggot. <laughs> but for the first time, I became the centre of some attention at Greybridge, and I found myself once again in the presence of Grayson, the school bully. Um. In return for not hitting any of the masters, the head had allowed Grayson certain privileges, such as having unmarried Filipino women in his room, smoking opium, and having a sauna instead of prayers. <laughs> he had just returned from a winter term cruise to South America and looked fit and well. Oh, Tomkinson. <laughs> Oh, you appalling little creep. Yes, you really are the ugliest and most unpleasant little piece of vermin it's ever been my misfortune to encounter. <laughs> I breathed a sigh of relief. At least he liked me. Now, some filthy little creeps in lower school have been telling me all about your escaping tricks. That's right, yes. Don't but... answer back, you snotty little oink. <laughs> <laughs> and don't you know that all escape routes from the school are managed by myself and the chaplain? No. Well, why do you think the chaplain's always laying gas mains and doing sewage work? 